What's up, YouTube? So, in this video, I want to introduce you to some of my favorite devices in the world. Microcontrollers. I also want to answer the question, what is Arduino? So, I hope you learn a lot and enjoy this video. And also, if you didn't check somewhere down here, but if you didn't notice yet, I've crossed 100 subscribers and I can't thank you guys enough for helping me reach this far. And just to say thank you, I'm making two microcontroller kits and I'll be giving them away at the end of this video. Now these kits will have everything you need for my next video, just programming LEDs. So do stick around and find out how you can win one. This is Just Sparrow and on this channel we do just about anything you can do yourself. So Just Sparrow, what even is a microcontroller? Well believe it or not, they are closer than you think. You probably interact with them every day without knowing it. Like in your microwave, your TV remote and even in your car. A lot of these products utilize these amazing devices. If it can emit sound, control lights, or move by itself, generally there's a microcontroller making it happen. You telling me all them things have microcontroller in it? You still don't answer the question. So microcontroller units, or MCUs for short, are small programmable computers on a single integrated circuit. This 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 is a this is an integrated circuit, if you didn't know. They contain everything you need to run a small programmable task. They have their own central processing unit or CPU memory, RAM, a clock, and peripherals. Now this kind of sounds like my personal computer, except everything on a small piece of silicone. The difference between your computer and a microcontroller, other than the extreme price difference, is that your PC is much more powerful and everything is separate. It has a dedicated CPU, the microprocessor, with multiple cores and upgradable hard drive, with a motherboard linking everything together. Your PC is also designed to run an operating system like Windows, Linux, or macOS. The OS can in turn run various programs simultaneously. Oh, that's kind of like when you send me your YouTube videos and I actually put them on mute in the background while I'll be doing other things on my computer. <laughs> Microcontrollers on the other hand are not designed to do multiple things at the same time. They can appear to do this with the high speeds or with the help of a real-time operating system, also known as an RTOS. They are really designed to do one thing great. Like, make America great again. <laughs> you had one job. Just the one. They can be used to do as something as simple as control a traffic light or as complex as stabilize a drone. So the applications are endless and that is why I use microcontrollers for most of my projects. And the good news is, so can you. So here I have some microcontrollers side by side. As you can see, all the sizes vary. And they can get even smaller. Now this chip right here is an Atmel ATiny85. It has six general purpose inputs and outputs, or GPIOs for short, and can run at up to 20 MHz. This 20 MHz is a clock frequency. It means that this little device can process instructions at 20 million times a second. It's fast, huh? Now I've used this microcontroller for a lot of small projects, like LED control or as a protocol converter. Now this big boy here is a microchip PIC18F46K22. It has 34 GPIOs and can run up to 64 MHz with 8 times the amount of flash memory as the Atmega ATiny85. It can hold bigger programs and I've actually used a similar PIC18F to make a health and monitoring system as part of my undergraduate group project. So shout out to Micro G Unit, the dream team. Dan, you're taking really long to get to the good stuff for now. All I want to do is build a drone to pick mango. Don't worry, we get in there. So there are a number of microcontroller manufacturers and development environments out there like Text Instruments Code Composer Studio and Microchips MP Lab. Now they are all great, but no matter the project, setting up the environment is always a tedious and annoying process. These programs require you to have knowledge on how compilers work, how to program an ASM and C, and also knowledge about the microcontroller itself, which means a lot of time in a data sheet learning about registers and the instruction set. On top of that, you need expensive programmers and build circuitry, and reality is Ain't nobody got time for this. Now I've been here, and I actually still am, and don't get me wrong, this is important as an engineer, but not so much as your average hobbyist. So some really smart people in Italy saw this problem and decided to remove some of those barriers to entry. We opened the barrier. So what they did was actually abstract away a lot of the setting up of the microcontroller and change both how you program them and use them. An Arduino was born. Now Arduino is basically a train one special. They are a software company that built the Arduino Integrated Development Environment, 
or IDE for short, this is the software that you use to write instructions to control the microcontroller. The Arduino language isn't Italian, but a modified version of the C and C++ programming languages. With added functions, get towards making microcontroller development easier, while still teaching you programming. Secondly, Arduino is a hardware company that designs and manufactures a wide range of general purpose microcontroller development boards. Now these boards have everything you need to get started while also giving you access to GPIOs and other peripherals that the microcontroller has to offer. Now this is an Arduino Uno, which is probably the most common Arduino board and what most people think of when they hear the word Arduino. On this here is the microcontroller, an Atmel 328P Avera microcontroller. Everything around it is supporting circuitry. You have the programmer, you have power. Now I'll go deeper into the software and hardware in the next video. But note that the Arduino programming language and the Arduino IDE is designed to work similarly for all of the boards that they support. Now lastly, and I think this is what makes Arduino so great, Arduino is also a community. A huge network of hobbyists, engineers, scientists that use and support their platform. And there are a lot of projects out there that people have published. The idea is you can take what they did and make it better in your own way and with your own creativity. And there are a lot of people online willing to help. I became a part of this community a couple years ago when I bought my first Arduino Uno and I took my problems to their forum. I in turn helped others with their problems. This is what I love so much about the community. And the good news is, now you can be part of that community. Now Arduino also runs an open source model. And what that means is everything that Arduino designs from their boards to their software, you also have available too. Open source is a term used for hardware and software development that is published online. People can then have access to the code and designs and use it. This opens up other people to become part of the development and find things like bugs or even make improvements, which they can then merge with the original. Now this cycle keeps going until you get a development community and more and more people join. But this also means people can take your product and sometimes even sell it depending on the license that people attach it with. Most times I've seen it's an MIT license, which means people can do use it however they seem fit, modify or sell. That's why there's a number of Arduino Uno lookalikes, what we call clones, on the market. These are usually much cheaper than the originals. Now Arduino is okay with this by the way. So here I have an Arduino made by Sunfounder. And here I have one made by SaintSmart. And here I have an original Arduino. Now to my knowledge they are all functionally the same but they are probably manufactured from different places with different qualities of components. But always be mindful and check reviews because I've come across a few that didn't work out of the box. Most times it was a driver issue, but you can never be too careful. Also, there are a lot of Arduino alternative platforms out there and sometimes may even be easier depending on your application. Most of these also support Arduino development boards. I'll try to put some links in the description below. With these three features, hardware, software and community, Arduino is highly recommended for both hobbyists and do-it-yourself people like you and me. So here I've laid out some development boards so you can see a comparison between different Arduinos. As mentioned before, the Arduino Uno was one of their first development boards and it was amazing because it meets the needs of 90% of microcontroller projects out there. You can easily access digital pins, ADCs and power and they run at 16 MHz. Also, you can get these relatively cheap on Amazon as part of a kit with a lot of extra components. A clone, of course. Now, this isn't the only development board that Arduino produces, or the only ones out there. Here, I have an Arduino Duo, which is about 5 times faster than the Arduino Uno. It has a lot more GPIOs and even supports USB, packing a 32-bit ARM Cortex CPU, so it can handle much bigger projects. I've actually used this to make a little stack system back in the day, where the guns could have talked to each other. Now the Arduino Duo runs at 33 volts, while the Arduino Uno runs at 5 volts, so you need to be a little more careful with the GPIOs. Looking at the smaller end of the spectrum, this is an Arduino Nano, which has the same microcontroller as the Arduino Uno, but in a different package. It's designed to be breadboard friendly. And this Arduino Pro Micro supports USB, so it can act as a USB keyboard and mouse. Now Arduino development boards are also designed to be stacked to what we call shields. Now shields are other development boards that you can lay on top of an Arduino to add more functionality. You can have shields that add Wi-Fi, 
GPS and even an LCD display. So you don't have to make those complex circuits yourself. Now Arduino makes a couple of these, but a lot of the good ones I've found are actually from third party companies like Adafruit and SparkFun. Now shields can be very expensive, but they don't require you to do any complex circuitry or soldering to the Arduino. Now what I normally do is I actually go get the modules, which are usually much cheaper than the shields themselves. So here I have some examples of some modules. This is a GPS module. This allows you to add GPS to a project for let's say remote control car or for an autonomous lawnmower. This is an LCD display where I can print words and information. Now I'm thinking to use this to make another countdown to Christmas clock. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you think. Now this is an XP wireless module that can send messages between two microcontrollers over 45 kilometers. So again, I hope everyone enjoyed this video and got a nice introduction to microcontrollers, Arduino. If I made any mistakes anywhere along this video and you watched this video, please let me know in the comment section so I can correct my knowledge. Oh yeah, I cannot forget the giveaway. So I'll be making two microcontroller kits based on the Arduino and um, my next video just programming LEDs. Now these kits will be built from my personal stash and I'll be testing everything before I ship them out. I'll be giving one kit away on kingsumo.com and the other on Facebook. So do check out the description below for the links and instructions of how you can win one. So good luck to everyone entering. Now I'll draw and post the winner after a week. Again, if you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button and do consider hitting that subscribe button if you want to see more of these videos. And, you know, see you in the next video.